Hi everyone, welcome to our July Urban Homestead. So here I am on the west side of our property and you can see plants on either side of me. And let's just start on the far west side. This is a smaller raised beds and this year I have some squash and some tomato. And you can see I am making use of um, some tomato cages those are working quite well they are really good supports uh, both the uh, the orange ones that you see uh, I believe that they're actually called tomato ladders and then you can see there's a little spiral one just past my shoulder and that works really well that's a heavy gauge wire uh, these stand up far better than the traditional say um, metal wire cages that you tend to find at say home improvement stores, garden centers. Uh, I've had these for several years. There's been no issue with um, its joints becoming um, broken apart at that. And there's appears to be no weak, weak spots. And again, even say when we have rains or some winds, uh, they don't topple these over. So I'm very pleased with that. But this year, one thing that is new is this garden just to the side of me. So folks, here we are on the west side of our garage. And this is an area that I hadn't done much with um, since we moved in. The bed is approximately three feet wide and it runs the length of our garage. So it's about 25, 26 feet in total length. Now the original homeowner, they put in this climbing rose and they put in two of the clematis vines that you see. But other than that, nothing else was here. And then a few years ago, I popped in a few iris. But again, still nothing spectacular. And I was always just battling weeds coming up. So this year I buckled down and I went with a lot of perennials as well as a few an annuals for color. So we have some flowering tobacco. I put in this hybrid tea rose. Uh, here's a coreopsis that is just finishing its bloom. We have some Veronica. Now the reason I went with this plant material, oh, and then back here, you can actually see still just a little bit of a flower, but I do have some penstemon. But the reason for this was pollinators, attracting pollinators to the garden. We have some phlox that I just thought was a lovely shade of light purple, a couple of ceramic squirrels, and I'll have to remember to tell you the story sometime behind that, as well as another hybrid tea rose. Uh, this one's really quite nice because it's a double flowered, um, well double petaled, rose nice fragrance to that and then here we have a variegated actually I have three they're variegated lavenders and they are just beginning to bloom if we get closer you can see just starting to bloom and then i have mulched this area with wood mulch that's done a great job with suppressing the weeds i've mulched to a thickness of about three to four inches and in that um, I have had to pull the occasional bindweed but that is held up well and then for just a little added color a little variation I went with some red flowered ivy geraniums and they have a thicker sort of waxy leaf quite pretty and they tend to stay shorter but mostly trail along the ground so that's it for our west side. And again, I did this planting primarily to attract pollinators to our garden. And this is also a good reminder that you can still plant perennials even during the heat of summer. But the key is you have to keep things watered. So another thing I have been working on this year besides adding some perennials, is actually refreshing some of my old 
patio furniture. Now these two benches, I've actually picked these up years ago at a garage sale, but the paint had all worn off and it's like, you know what? It's time to give these a fresh coat. So I had some paint left over from my garden shed and chicken coop project. So this is what we have. And I've positioned them in the garden. So they're underneath the shade. I have a columnar blue spruce, but the biggie that it's under is a grand old crab apple. So on a hot summer day, this is a nice little shady area in the garden. Here is our clove currant, and I believe I showed you that in our June video, but check this out. The berries are ripening, and the berries are ripe when they're that very dark black color. See, we just kind of scan in on them. And these are unlike your other typical currants that tend to have a musky, if not slightly astringent taste, these actually taste sweet as is. And for us, I mean, we'll pop these in our mouth just eating them fresh off the plant. Oh, look at, there's some more lovelies that are ready. But uh, they are really good in pies and jams and jellies. So keep that in mind if you're looking for a nice berry bush for next spring to get in the ground. And as a bonus, when the plant is flowering, the aroma smells like clove. And again, that's clove currant. Here is another furniture project for this season. I have a pair of redwood patio chairs that I picked up at an estate sale. And it's been at least 25 years that I've had them. Um, they didn't come with cushions, but I measured them and I found cushions that fit them at one of our garden centers. This year, I decided to refresh the paint. They originally were painted white and a lot of the paint had chipped off, but I went with the trim paint. It's an exterior paint that I had used on my chicken coop because I thought, well, why not sort of tie things in on our urban homestead. And then in the middle, there's our fire pit. Oh, it's been so warm this year, we haven't used it yet. And then the tarp on the ground, I uh, currently have a piece of furniture. It's another piece of patio furniture that I'm actually in the process of staining. And yes, that is a gray color there, but I'm really happy with how my two redwood chairs turned out. And look, before I bought these cushions before I even thought about selecting a pink color and that sort of creamy white just goes so nicely with the color in the chair cushion. And folks, here we are looking straight on at my straw bale garden. Now ignore the black tub as well as the, the brown one. Uh, I will be getting both of those filled and planted uh, with greens at a later point in time. But just behind them, I have two rows of straw bales. And this is my first year working with straw bale gardening. And I have to say, I absolutely love it. And as we move in, I mean, check that out. That is my Romanesco squash. And it is absolutely loving being planted in the straw bale. It's doing well. I've already harvested a squash and I have, we look in there, there's several more little squash that are forming. And as we come along, there is my black cherry tomato. It is my favorite heirloom cherry tomato, but look at that, they're ripening. I have some kale planted in the sides of the bale that is doing really well. This is a good way to do some really dense planting. And then if we peek through there, check that out. I have some jalapeno peppers that are coming along nicely. There's another pepper plant. And I do have a spaghetti squash. And you'll have to forgive the, um, I do have or, uh, 
powdery mildew that's formed. And what's happened was that when I put the bales, I hadn't realized I put them near a sprinkler head. So this poor plant is just being bombarded with water every time we water. So hence the powdery mildew. Uh, next year I am going to move this row of straw to another location so I won't have this because out here in Colorado we are so arid that powdery mildew really isn't an issue. But in spite of the powdery mildew, look at that beautiful spaghetti squash. And it is growing up nicely up and over my cattle panel garden trellis. Yeah, that is just a beauty. And then if we look over here, look at that. That is just a nice big cluster of tomatillos. I do have a combination of purple and green in there. Uh, since we live here in Colorado, salsa verde is a thing, and you make that with tomatillos. And then we scan along, we do have some more garlic. They're not in the straw bale, but I do have some more tomatoes around and through here. Again, more peppers because these, frankly, are the things that I love the most. And then the wire acts as a trellis. So with the tomatoes, I weave them in and out of these wires. And here is my newly refinished chicken coop. And to think this all started with a five gallon bucket of brand new, never been opened paint that somebody had for sale on Facebook Marketplace. And I just thought, you know, I actually like that color and why not get it? That's gonna be enough that I can certainly paint the chicken coop as well as my garden shed. And our chicken coop is approximately seven by eight feet. Um, Mr. Overalls, he built this. Uh, the top of the coop is actually shingled and I had trim paint as well. So along the edge, we actually bought some egg and dart trim from Habitat for Humanity because, well, why not? Why not have egg and dart trim on a chicken coop? And this actually represents the opening to which we can get to the nest boxes. So I painted that sort of a creamy color. And then Mr. Overalls, made these little awnings out of sheet metal that we had that the previous owner had left. So the top, the top part of the awning went with the trim and then I went with sort of a wine colored paint to paint the awning with. And that just adds a nice pop of color. And since it's summertime, the windows are off and we just have a screen for our window openings there. And then as we scroll along, okay, that's a, that's a vintage thermometer that I picked up years ago. And then here's a little beauty, just something that was on some scrap lumber that we picked up in an alleyway. And I thought, well, why not? So it got refreshed with the wine colored paint and the cream colored paint. And again, we just have that nailed on the exterior of our chicken run. That wall of green you see in front of you, that is our hops vines. And we have that growing on the west side of our chicken run. So during the summer, it provides excellent shade. Uh, it's a nice way to help keep our flock cool. And since we've covered the chicken run with hardware cloth, the chickens are unable to reach through and peck at the vine or the hops themselves. And then in front, just for a little color um, annuals, we got some nice little sunflowers and Martha Washington geraniums. Again, we put that there just for a pop of color, but you know what? The pollinators love it as well. And here we are on the north side of our chicken coop and run. I even went ahead, I put in some delphiniums, so that's a nice perennial to add to your garden. They're, they have been blooming well. Again, the chickens can't reach them, so a nice pop of color. And again, it just kind of dresses up the the whole urban homestead and chicken coop area so i'm really liking that and as we move along there's some of our grapes that are tumbling out from our arbor and here i have 
a little wrought iron basket that a friend had given me and we finally got it hung this year. So right now the basket has sweet potato vine and coleus growing in it and I'm just loving this color combination. It is just stunning. This I do have to water by hand. Uh, our in-ground sprinkler system doesn't shoot high enough that it hits this but I don't mind being able to water that by hand. And then as we scroll up, here's a little project that I added earlier this month. I had the old black bracket and I also had the child's watering can, but it was broken and was definitely faded in color. I think it was a pink. So I fixed the can and then I went ahead and spray painted it a wine color. Mr. Overalls had some chain, so he helped me hang it, and then we screwed it into our pergola. So what do you think of that little idea? I just love it. I think it's a nice little pop of color back here, and kind of provides, oh, a greeting and a description of what you're about to see when we come around the corner. And as we just take a few more steps, here is my pride and joy. This, my friends, is my garden shed and this has been a months long project. I mean, this has been several months just to get the exterior done. The original was just a faded brown and the doors were solid. So the shed was painted in a body color. The sort of creamy trim paint was added as well as the wine color, which let me get you a little closer so you can see, but I did the soffits in the wine color and that actually adds a nice depth. And then on either side of the French doors that Mr. Overall's hung, uh, these were something that we got from a neighbor when they were redoing their house and they just gave them to us. But I had these pair of vintage shutters that I had kept and knew that someday I was gonna use them on the project. Well, the garden shed was in. So check that out. We got French doors on there. We have shutters. It adds so much natural lighting. And then, looky there, my little garden shed sign. Uh, I've had that for several years, but to ensure that it would stay looking nice, I spray coated it with some poly paint. So it's going to be uh, weather resistant. So it should last me for years to come in this area. Here, is our vegetable truck. I also picked this up from Facebook Marketplace. Someone was moving and they just didn't have room at their new home for it and I gladly um, purchased that. It fits perfectly underneath our grape arbor and it provides me additional raised bed gardening. So currently in here I have cucumbers that are doing quite well. I actually harvested earlier this morning, but our cucumbers are just loaded with blossoms as well as little, little tiny cucumbers that are developing. And oh, 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 just we look right here. Let's, there we go. There's a little cucumber that's coming along. And then I also have Swiss chard in here. And even though we're in the heat of summer, the cucumbers as well as our grapes are providing some great shade so the Swiss chard is doing quite well and it hasn't even thought about bolting so we have been harvesting from that um, again some more cucumbers and some more chard down here here is one other thing I wanted to show you this year we actually put in a little flagstone and combination strip stone patio in front of our garden shed. So it goes underneath my potting benches over here and then through the entrance. I didn't have enough to go underneath my vegetable truck, but maybe next year. Uh, all of these pieces were ones that we actually found on the property in various locations or that I have picked up again through flea marketing or that people have just posted for free. 
So this is basically a no cost patio and really helps dress up this area. Plus, since this is a frequently used spot, it's nice that this is not muddy when we're going in and out of the garden shed. And just as a reminder, there's our garden shed. And then here's our little patio. And Mr. Overall's just freeform with the placement of the stones. And I think he did an excellent job with that. So that's an idea to keep in mind that if you have an area that you frequently use as a walkway or uh, a space you're in, in and out of frequently, and if you do get a lot of moisture, uh, consider putting in something like this just to help reduce tracking mud in and out of the house or your other buildings. And here's a progress update on our raspberries. We've been staying on top of the weeding. And again, this bed is at least 50 feet long and about five to six feet wide. And here are our raspberries. Uh, we typically get raspberries uh, early August. And right now, still no signs yet of them blooming, but the plants are growing well. They're quite, quite healthy. And again, we've been staying on top of the weeding. We've been watering them well. And also with our late winter and early spring moisture, we're really hoping that we will have an excellent raspberry harvest this season. So folks, that's our July Urban Homestead Tour. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed what you see. And if you have any comments, go ahead and post them. I'll be happy to answer your questions. So again, thanks for watching.